Right, so I've actually said, in fact, I've made a couple of videos about this in the last few months or so, about how the next generation younger people are not uh, getting into motoring as much as, um, as we did, as our generation did, if you like. And, um, and, I, and I've been you know, quite fair in saying that you know, I can completely understand that when you look at the cost and everything that's involved in that process, it does make perfect sense. But having said that, there seems to be some evidence um, in terms of the later consumer information, this is from AutoTrader, that um, I might have jumped to that conclusion. Either I've jumped to it too quickly, or maybe things are changing, or maybe it's just not quite as bad as we think it is. What am I on about? I'll tell you right after this. A brown car guy. Right, so this is from AutoTrader, consumer analysis from AutoTrader, and they say that uh, car ownership not only remains vital to young people, but the need to own a car among 17 to 24 year olds is increasing. This is great news. Um, so, so it's actually increasing. I, this, you know, this is, I mean, if you listen to my other videos and stuff that I've talked about and how I lament the fact that people are falling out of love with cars, the, it doesn't mean as much as it did to my generation when we were younger, then um, this could be good news. So what are they saying? Um, ah, immediately jumps into bad news. However, from a backlog in driving test to the rising cost of motoring, young people face significant barriers to ownership, making the need for a more transparent, connected, and convenient car buying experience more important. I mean, this is the auto trader bit, but that just emphasizes what I was saying before, is that you can't blame, it, uh, blame them for being reluctant to take up driving. Uh, just the cost, I mean, the cost of a driving lesson is over 40 pounds an hour now. Uh, that's just for an hour. I mean, it's staggering. Anyway, let's go back to their study. So in a study of over 2,000 people, and these were all 17 to 24-year-olds, 90% said, so 90% of 17 to 24-year-olds said that car ownership was important to them, citing the need to get around. 70% uh, said that that was particularly the reason that they just needed to get around. 67% it was important to, 67% said it was important to their independence. Um, and it said that that was their primary reason for owning a car, which is great because that harks back to our generation. And for us, the freedom, I mean, again, we don't have, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have social media. So for us to get around and see our friends and go out and do stuff, the car was like the number one priority back in the day. And here it's kind of echoing uh, the same sort of sentiment. However, this age group isn't motivated just for practical reasons. Uh, the UK has always been a nation of car lovers. Well, we know that, despite everything that's going on, despite all the war and motorist stuff that's going on, all the anti-car rhetoric that's happening, um, the UK is a, a nation of car lovers. And the younger generation, apparently, is no exception. One thing you should check out, there's a video I did recently with the Paddock Speed Shop. All young people building a garage to build classic racing cars to go racing. It's brilliant. And then they, and they were saying pretty much the same thing. So back to this, um, over half, that's 54%, uh, said that they wanted to own their wheels purely for the enjoyment of driving. How wonderful and heartening is that? Good on you guys. Um, the UK's unreliable public transport network was also highlighted as a major factor. Hey, no kidding. Yesterday, I had to make a journey uh, within the Brent area, right? Didn't want to take the car, so I jumped on the bus. The bus said it was going to take me from point A to point B, no problem at all. Got to Wembley, and traffic hit hard, and the bus just terminated. And because the traffic was so bad, there was like, forget about the next bus. So then I ended up walking halfway across Wembley to help me get to the destination. And, and this, is, this happens to me on the rare occasions that I decide to use the buses. Um, the tube network I use more often, buses I use less frequently, but it's crazy. It's almost like the bus system knows when I'm on it and there's a standing order from TFL that if the brown car guy is on a bus, then terminate the bus, because it's like the second time this has happened to me in recent months. Anyway, um, back to this thing. <laughs> Complete sidetrack. Reassuringly for the automotive industry, the need for ownership shows no sign of waning among this age group. In fact, 70% of those 17 to 24 year olds surveyed said that having their own car has become even more important over the last 12 months. So this, we could be seeing actually a dramatic shift here. So maybe I wasn't completely wrong about the fact that young people are not embracing car ownership and driving as much as they used to but perhaps that is now actually bouncing back the other way and this of course is good news for car industry for car people and for the car community of course so um, like i said they're having their own cars become increasingly more important over the last 12 months which is more than double the percentage of young drivers aged over 45 
Wow, only 31% of them said it was important compared to 70% of 17 to 24 year olds. So this is remarkable. So the over 45s now are less keen on it than the younger people. But the younger people getting into cars, frankly, is very, very important. Young people also believe that driving more uh, with nearly four times, uh, sorry, they believe that they are driving more with nearly four times the proportion of young people, that's 43%, claiming to use their car more today than they did a year ago compared to their older con counterparts, the 45 plus generation, which is 12%. That means there's definitely an increasing level of uptake amongst the younger generation for cars. But as this press release says, mounting barriers for young drivers. Demands does resume, uh, remain exceptionally uh, strong among young people, but they are facing growing challenges. And according to the DBLA, and I know this from uh, my son, for example, um, you can't get driving tests. The already lengthy backlog for driving tests is only set to grow, with current forecasts suggesting that by the end of 2025, the gap between the demand for tests and the number of available tests will be over 1.1 million. Wow. Even now, if you try to book a test, you won't get one for like seven, eight months. Hey, are you enjoying this video? Then make sure you hit the like button. It's very important. Plus, comment, share, and make sure you're subscribing. Even once they pass their test, however, many face being priced out of the market with uh, auto traders saying that, you know, there's um, not enough affordable cars. And this is likely due to the shortfall in the new car production. Don't forget, we have got a gap of um, almost a million cars. Um, um, because of the COVID, because of the production that stopped and what have you. And those cars haven't come through in that typical three to five year life cycle of new to use and then coming into the used market. So even if you look in, and that has a knock on effect throughout the used market. So even at the lower end of the market, it still has a knock on effect, which is why we still see used car prices of popular models still relatively high. Um, 58% uh, of 70 to 24 year olds surveyed uh, who had already bought a car had paid less than 11,000 pounds. So that's the sort of marketplace that their market segment that they're looking at. Um, by uh, the volume of stock on auto trader in this price bracket has actually fallen by nearly half 46 percent so that's the price at which they're looking at under 11,000 pounds but the amount of stock available is less than half of what was available before uh, sorry almost half of what was fallen before so 46 percent um, during the time frame stock levels in auto trader in the under 5,000 pound barrier again a keen entry point for new drivers uh, they have dropped by three quarters so that's 75 percent drop in the availability of that stock that is below 5,000 pounds extraordinary the affordability issue has been further compounded by rising insurance costs. They've accelerated at twice the rate for younger people than the average driver. 18 year olds have seen their premiums increase 84% in the last 12 months, while the average 17 year old has faced a hike of 98%. It's absolutely ridiculous. Insurance companies sort this out. You are going to kill your own industry because people are just going to stop driving. If you don't get young people driving, then you won't be able to sell any insurance. Car industry won't be able to sell any cars. Government will be able to make any tax. So, and that will be the end of everything. So, removing existing barriers. Um, they're looking at uh, transparency around finance. Over a third of younger consumers bought with cash uh, did so because they weren't aware of any finance options that are available to them. Obviously, they knew they're starting their careers. And actually, to be honest, you don't want to take a massive loan at that point just for a car. So it makes sense for a lot of people to go for that under five grand by save up a bit of money and just buy something. I know that's what I did when I was younger. I never took a loan to buy a car, um, certainly at that point. Auto Traders research shows younger drivers want to complete more of the car buying journey digitally. So this is endemic of the fact that, you know, we're living in a digital environment, all online, all social media. In fact, 42% want to complete tasks online, including paying a deposit to reserve a car. And uh, that compares to only 26% of older drivers, which prefer to clear to do the whole thing online. Um, so anyway, so that is what's happening with the younger generations. I think that is fantastic. I think it's brilliant. I think it's to be encouraged. And I think that, you know, if we don't do that, we will see the car industry, the insurance industry, the aftermarket industry, uh, all come to an end, which ultimately is not gonna help anybody, not least the government, which seems to want to have a war on the cars because then they won't be able to make any money off us. Keep that in mind. See you all in the next video. alive healing toe shifts and engines that thrive but now we're stuck in this automated cage silent engines no war no rage policies and politics driving us insane fuel costs rising god what a pain they say it's for the planet for the air we breathe but take away our car keys you'll see us see red line let your life a quarter mile at a time fever 10 seconds or less it ain't no crime flat out everything fades with pace the body moving through time and space that's where you meet it it creeps up on you Drivers hate
into lifeless haze We long for the days of visceral engagement But every gear shift was a damn statement Red line, left your rap a quarter mile at a time Three for ten seconds or less, it ain't no crime Flat out, everything fades with pace A body moving through time and space That's what you need it, it creeps up on you Victoria Hoff, you're playing dirty role. From the heart of London to the outer zones, fighting for the freedom, breaking all the bones. The QLS files, it's the story of our time. Riding through the city, gonna take back what's mine. Making schemes on the street Max and the crew, we ain't gonna back down Revving up the engines, tearing through the town Protests in the square, voices loud and clear From Trafalgar to the hills, we're fighting out of fear Secrets in the shadows, truth's gonna light In this urban jungle, we prepare for the fight From the heart of London to the outer zones Fighting for the freedom, breaking all the bones the QLS files, it's the story of our time Riding through the city, gonna take back what's mine Less files, it's a tale to be told Max Turner, hell know the team so strong In the fight for freedom, we keep rolling on Check this out guys, it's my book, it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller, it's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com. 